Welcome to the Mojo Market Report. Here's your hosts, Dave Sturgio and Chris Gucci. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Mojo Market Report here on a Thursday as we start week seven, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is Dave Sturgio. It is Chris Gucci. It is A5 Anthony behind the glass. And, of course, we're coming to you from Chop Studios. Lots to get into today. Um, based off of yesterday, I mean, we're both a little tired. We decided to stay up and, and mourn the first Yankee loss. That, yeah, that stunk. I mean, uh, but, hey, the Knicks are back, and they lost, happening. too. So, New York. We here. <laughs> so that, that was interesting. Uh, but anyway, both seasons kicking off. Both seasons and sports coming to Mojo in the very near future. I know basketball's on the horizon, so we're excited about that. Maybe I'm not so excited about the Knicks, but I'm more excited about the NBA season getting kicked off, tipped yeah, off, I can't whatever wait. you want to call it. Anyway. Seven and one yesterday. In your bets? Yes. Wow. So there was eight games? Day. Bro, full slate. Wow. Full Holy. slated NBA okay. games last night. I did night. see yes. the Brooklyn Nets go get trounced, too. New York, all over the place. We got to redeem ourselves. How about Zion last night? Looking yeah. solid. Yes, Zion looks good. Looks like a new all player. Right. Two football. Uh, and in look, in spirit of the fact that the Thursday night football games have delivered such exhilarating, uh, intense crazy good football and when i say all that i am totally totally lying to you thursday night football has been you know left to be desired right so we'll get into the thursday night football game a little later on between the saints and the cardinals um lots to talk about there because of a specific return and we'll talk about all that when we get there but in spirit of the games have been stinking you know when you look at the mojo market and your investments right a lot of my plays in my portfolio actually all of my plays are long plays right but there's Chris, there's different ways you can make money on the Mojo market, correct? Yes, of course, there's different ways, Dave. That's why we're gonna go short. We're it, gonna sh it's short season. It is short season, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna talk to you guys about a couple guys that we feel either there's there's two ways to short a player. There's two ways to think that a they're just gonna have a absolutely bad bad performance in the coming week or weeks or long term. Like you know, the guys that are older, the guys that might not be banking any more value going forward in their careers. So to me, when I think of short season and I think of guys that are in the twilight and not looking good, unfortunately this might rub you the wrong way, but I'm starting with Aaron Rodgers. I mean, look, Aaron Rodgers right now. You're not throwing Aaron Rodgers into the mix without me bringing Tom Brady in. There's just oh, no so we're gonna way. we're gonna short both. We're shorting both here on the show, okay? I know this is going to sound crazy, but if you look, the, the, it's right there in front of you as far as their career earnings with Mojo. Obviously, top dog Tom Brady, he's set the standard because he won about 50, 50, 50, 50. 54 Super Bowls. Uh, he's been in about 64 Super Bowls. So he's won a lot of championships, and that's why you get the bonuses. That's how you get to the, to the top, top spot uh, on Mojo. Now, the only thing is with Tom Brady, and I'll let you touch on Tom Brady after I get done with Aaron Rodgers because Aaron Rodgers right now, does not look like Aaron Rodgers simply because you, you know, I don't think enough. I, they're like, I'm not trying to like, it's not an, you don't edit. it's not an Aaron editor or anything like that. I'm just trying to get it before I, I don't want to like show you why I'm hating on Aaron Rodgers, but there wasn't enough spoken about when Devontae Adams parted town. Meaning you looked at Aaron Rodgers and you're saying, you know what? He can make anybody a star, you know, because he's that good. And, and it's true. Like, it's it's absolutely true. Skill set wise, I still think personally, maybe a little bit of Patrick Mahomes, but I'm saying with the ball in his hands, the guy that can drop it in the bucket, the guy that can fire a laser, the guy that can lead a, lead a receiver in stride, Aaron Rodgers is still one of the best throwers of the football in the game. However, preface that with... Now he's got nobody to catch. And and you, I know we've talked about Dobbs, and we talked about Christian Watson, and we talked about a lot of these young guys. Tanyan came on last week. We've talked about a lot of this, but it's not sustainable. And when you look at Aaron Rodgers, he's already come out and say if and said that if the wide receivers, they don't gel and things don't look right, that I might just kind of call it a day. And when you call it a day with the future projections, if you don't meet the expectations, you're just going to get the bank value. So that's why right now I have a feeling – that this might be the end of the road, unfortunately, for Aaron Rodgers. That's why I'm shorting him for the rest of his career, meaning yeah. the next 10 games. I, I hate to admit this, but I agree that Aaron Rodgers is right now. I think coming into this season, I was I was leaning towards buy on Aaron Rodgers because of the contract that he signed in the offseason. Right. But when you're looking at now his market projections going forward, it expects him to play like two or three more seasons. I don't you know. See that? I don't know if Aaron Rodgers is going to play two or three more seasons. I think there's a chance he comes back next year. But even still, if he returns for another season, it's still going to be hard for him to accumulate that market projection going forward. It, it looks at like 15 more dollars. I don't know that Aaron Rodgers is going to stick around for that. He looks, 
a little bit disinterested. I know it's easy to say that because they're coming off of two losses. If if the Packers beat the Giants and they beat the Jets and they were sitting at it's a, a different, different story five and one right now, we would probably be thinking like, well, Aaron Rodgers is probably going to play two more years. That could still all might happen, but it's there's a lot of football that needs to be played from now until three seasons from now for Aaron Rodgers to meet those expectations. I do agree that Aaron Rodgers right now is I'm probably going to go short. I'm not because it's my guy. But, yeah, I agree. <laughs> we probably thing. have to go short on, on Aaron Rodgers. And conversely, this same deal with Tom Brady. Tom Brady, they're looking at a potential another $8 or 7 or $8 in market projections. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady's wife and his whole family is leaving him. I know that I'm not making light of that situation, but that really does weigh on a player. Oh, absolutely. He does not look like the same player on and off the field. If there is any way that he's able to salvage what's going on at home, I would imagine that he has to not play next year. And really, I don't want to say the wheels look like they've came off on Tom Brady because obviously anytime I I thought that three years ago when he was in New England and he won another Super Bowl. So I'm not going to write Tom Brady off the player. But because he had already retired once, Mm. I don't see Tom Brady returning for another season after this no matter what. If you look at it, the offense hasn't really been going so well so no. far this season. No, I mean, season. look, his stats are not as good. Go- I mean, we're six games into his season. He's only thrown eight touchdowns, and he's got one interception, sacked nine times. For, you know, just in... in, in not terrible. But it's not terrible. It's not Tom Brady. Ratio number. is great, but it's not as gaudy as it usually is, right? And, and look, you have to look at the Buc- you know, the Buccaneers' uh, offense has been banged up, right? Mike Evans, uh, Chris Godwin was out. You know, they lost Gronk, and I don't know how much of a stock you would put in Gronk uh, but he was a safety net, right? Cameron Brake gets hurt last week. Leonard Fournette, again, great running back. He's been a weapon out of the backfield. That's great, but he's not going to put up the big – he's not going to help and contribute the big passing numbers. What I will say about both of these guys, Tom Brady's schedule gets a little easier. It does. But Aaron Rodgers, when it comes to the facing the next two defenses, it's the Washington front and the Buffalo front. That's not going to – that's not a good – recipe right now for Rogers success they need to run the football I'm not going to get into that I'm sure we can maybe get into their game tomorrow but what I'm saying is Aaron Rodgers does not look like Aaron Rodgers um he's frustrated verbally uh visually and I just you're, you're right I don't think he if makes the, a pass I think we're Packers, gonna see the end of both of these guys if careers the Packers are able to make some type of move for a DJ Moore let's say I think that there's a chance that Aaron Rodgers gets reinvigorated even as early as this season and we have a different conversation but as it looks right now I don't know about Rodgers playing past this year. And Jordan Love waiting in the wings, you kind of almost have to find out about that. I wonder how the Packers feel now. Is there a little buyer's remorse on the Rodgers contract? Because of course. I don't know. About, well, you know what? No, they didn't do themselves any favors. You well, know, the, the Packers did not do themselves any favors by doing what they did. They lost Adams in a trade. Well, they didn't lose that. They traded Devontae well, Adams. Look, look, no, no, no. You have to understand how that process worked. They offered Devontae Adams more money than the Raiders. It wasn't about... Oh, we don't want Devontae. They tried. They actually paid more than the Raiders would. He didn't want to be there. He wanted to go to Vegas. He wanted to play with his buddy, which we're going to get to him in a few. Oh, is he is he on this list there? Um, but anyway, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, don't expect them to play past 2022. So for that reason, we're out. <laughs> Short Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers. You're sticking, you're sticking with a quarterback going next, right? Yeah, I actually have a couple quarterback. It's a quarterback, quarterback heavy show guy. today. All right, so who's next? I'm going with Davis Mills. No, oh, no. Not Mills. I am, Mills I am Mafia. A, I am riding the bus of the Mills Mafia. I am like front and center. I am mm. all I've been a, a Davis Mills fan since college. He's just a to me, he's a guy that rises above the expectations, and he's done that at every stop. The problem is this is the NFL. And he got his opportunity largely based on the fact that they really didn't have anybody else. They shipped off I the think Sean that Watson. He was a placeholder during a rebuild, and he proved his worth in terms of what he could bring to the table as a backup quarterback. But I don't know that they're looking at Davis Mills as a starter in this league. He's gotten his chances, and right now they're sitting firmly entrenched in the top five of the draft again. Right. And we talked about these quarterbacks yesterday that are about to enter the draft class, and they're loaded. So Davis Mills is going to have a hard time fighting off one of those talents. And I do believe that the Texans are all in on a quarterback. Like I said, they're in a rebuild. Davis Mills was the placeholder in said rebuild, and he proved, you know what, as a fourth-round pick, He's going to be a solid backup, and it might even be with the Texans. So I'm not going to say he's not going to have a, a decent career in this league, but you're going to need some injuries to take place after this season for him to get a starting job again. And, and something I can say about Davis Mills is that, or, or Davis Mills and the backup quarterback position in general, they've been on the rise. You know, like the backup quarterbacks around the NFL on the mojo market have been on the rise. One, because of opportunity. Two, injury. Three, you know, bad play, right? Davis Mills right now is the starting quarterback of the Texans, and he's just not delivering W's, yeah. and that's, at the end of the day, and the it's, conversation. It's, this is a modest one, too, because it's not like there's really much inherent risk. It's I just think he doesn't need to 
exceed much because his market projections are fairly low. It almost seems like the market recognizes this fact, but at the same time, it doesn't. There's a little bit of a buffer as to where they may not take a quarterback. I think that's a foregone conclusion that they will. Didn't I say I think they had two picks in the first top ten? So, like, they're not going to miss is what yeah, I'm saying on a quarterback. Gonna, they're going to definitely draft a quarterback, and Davis Mills, while he'll be their backup, or someone's backup. He's not going to be a starter for long. That will be absolutely a, a, a crusher to his. They didn't really do stock. him any favors. He's on his second head coach in as many seasons, which is really like sixteen games. A long lost, as a, a lost starter. soul on that team is is Brandon Cooks. Like that guy needs another team. Yeah, Brandon Cooks, or he needs another quarterback. Hey, Brandon Cooks just signed a deal with that team. In the yeah, I know, season, but so. it's almost as if like. He's like, I know we're going to stink, but I'll stick around. Well, you know, like, I he could be the get, face it, of the franchise, but he's not. It's all it's weird. about money. I don't know. It stinks. Davis Mills, not the not the quarterback that we hoped he would be. A lot of people got behind Davis Mills, and now the, the wheels are falling off the, the Mills Mafia bus. Staying with quarterback here. This one, it won't shock you, I don't think, based off of what we've seen already in 2022. But I'm going to go with Matt Stafford. Okay, Super Bowl winning champion last year gets his bonus in you know in the Mojo market if, if it was you know if it was happening. Um, he's almost he scratched the surface of almost being in the hundred club, right? So he's like right there because of his bank value right now is sitting at eighty, right? So like right now, if you get in on Matt Stafford, you're like, well, you know, he's done. He's had a solid career, but here's the problem with Matt Stafford right now is that you as a quarterback, no matter who you are, I don't care who you are. You were only as good as your offensive line because if your offensive line, those big dogs in the, in the front and center right there in the trenches, if they're not blocking for you, you're not doing anything. And through six games, Matt Stafford's been sacked 22 times, and that's averaging about 3.5 a game. He's being put on his back three and a half times a game. Cooper Cup is one of the best, if not the best receiver in football to some, right? He can't even he can't do enough, right? Because you gotta you gotta have time to at least yes, will there be a couple splash plays where it's a slant over the middle and Cooper takes it to the house for a house call? Sure. But Matt Stafford is struggling right now. His offensive line is banged up. Their left tackle's out for the year as of this week now, too. Right. So ready for this New upcoming injury. schedule for Matt Stafford, just at, on a short game, literally specifically this season. San Francisco, Tampa Bay. Arizona against their pass rush, New Orleans, which is nobody to sneeze at either. Kansas City, it's well, all Arizona's like, defense stinks. Yeah, but their pass rush is not is not terrible, is what I'm saying. And look, how good do you have to be to burrow over the, the Rams offensive line yeah, right now? Yeah, I mean anybody's anybody's pass rush doing is it, right. Against so like the Rams. even Carolina gave him some fits, and that's the thing. People try to jump all over Matt Stafford. Yes, uh, last week you're like, well, there he is, he's back. Like you pay Carolina. Carolina yeah. holds the number one overall pick right now. So it's not it's not the best scenario for Matt Stafford. And again, like the player, love the story. He gets out of Detroit, you know, gets out of poverty really, and goes in Hollywood, wins himself the Super Bowl. Congratulations. But that's it. Like, could you could you look there and see what it says for his future before I assess? Because that's 1654. Really, 1654. Does it say his average bank there? Uh no. It just says $80.55 yeah, for his banked price. Okay, so I don't know. Like I, I'm on the fence about Matthew Stafford because I feel like the market doesn't Project him to play much longer. Sixteen dollars and fifty four cents. That that to me at his that age, gives him like three good seasons left. At his age on that team, you know, considering where I'm looking at some of the other quarterbacks' market projections going forward, do they really think the injuries are piling up on Stafford that much? He's is been backed up already this is year. Is the offensive line as bad as they're saying? I mean, I'm on the fence because I look at the teams that they've played, and really, you played San Fran, you played Dallas, you played Buffalo in your first five weeks. Right, so those three defensive lines are the top three defensive lines in the NFL. Yeah, so but it's gonna like make, I guess it doesn't get any easier. Though. It's gonna make it's gonna make almost any offensive line look like they're struggling. But even though even said like Matthew Stafford really hasn't been good inside a clean pocket either this mm -hmm. year. I know because I've looked into that. Bro, he's got six touchdown passes, eight interceptions. Nice ratio. Yeah, I not think so that much. Matthew Stafford has done a good job throughout his career about keeping these these like nagging chronic injuries under wraps. I think he's got a real elbow issue. He and got I the think crap got, kicked out of him in Detroit. He's got a real elbow issue. <laughs> every, he's got a real back issue. And I think the market knows that, and that's why he's projected a little bit lower. This is the only reason why I'm I'm like hesitant to short the player. I'm almost just like a, I'm going to stay away from this one altogether because the talent surrounding him, and you know, I've written the Rams off before going into last year, and they end up winning the Super Bowl. So I'm not going to write Matthew Stafford off. They do have talent in that offense. And if there's a chance that Odell does come back, it adds a, a, a little bit of a spike. But I don't know if it's going to be Odell because they're saying playoff time now, basically December on Odell. Well, from what I've heard and read the yesterday. The Rams might not be in the The Rams are not in, and, and I believe that uh, some one of the front runners could be the Kansas City Chiefs now. I'm reading reports. Okay, so 
I'm just saying. Everybody just, relax. Everybody, my homes and OBJ. Everybody relax. Okay. Uh, so Matt Stavers. So now you're you're about to throw this curveball. We've been talking quarterbacks the entire time, right? We wrote this down in pre, and I was just like, I want OBJ to go to the Chiefs. By the way, and no kidding, come to the Packers. Yeah, I know. Um, so you're going to throw a little bit of a curveball ski here, okay? Uh, so when when we were discussing this in pre, you said this, and I kind of you know what you know. Why are you shorting one Nick Chubb? All right, so bear with me on this one because no. I know Nick <laughs> Chubb is is one of the premier running backs in the NFL, and you'd be like, well, why am I going to short Nick Chubb? Well, let me here to tell you why you're going to short Nick Chubb. So Nick Chubb is banked 1039 in his career. See. They're essentially asking him to double his output from this point on. I know it's a little bit less in market projections. It's like nine or eight or nine. 839, yeah. So it's between eight and nine, correct. Thank you, Dave. No problem. So it's, it's between math. eight and nine, and I think Nick Chubb at age 27, right, not really a pass catcher out of the backfield. He's he's largely just a between the tackles guy. He has some breakaway speed, but Nick Chubb is I wouldn't call him a one dimensional back because that's not fair, right? He could do he could run on the outside. He could go between the tackles, but he's not versatile in the realm of catching passes. And they don't use him like that whatsoever. I know Kareem Hunt's there largely to be the that's, pass that's, catching yeah, back. That's his role. At 27 years old, with the wear and tear that Nick Chubb has had throughout his college career on into his NFL career, I just can't see them asking him to achieve the same thing he achieved in the first half of his career from the age 27 on. And then when you look over at his contract situation, I know that Nick Chubb just signed a deal recently. I thought it was a very bad deal for Nick Chubb. I know the Browns got a team-friendly deal, and there's outs for the Browns every year. There's a chance that Nick Chubb gets cut in any given season. The injury risk is very high in the NFL for a running back, and the fact that they essentially have an out after every year, what was it? You said something about 1.2 million. After this year, there's a 1.2 guaranteed salary his next year 2023 would be 2.8 and then no guaranteed salary in 2024 so he can be out of here literally if they really wanted to push come to shove they can get rid of him today hits are basically nothing so if nick chubb even gets a shred of a serious injury there's no reason for the browns to hang on to him unless they just believe that the recovery will be there but that being said uh, there will be some dead money to accrue but again there are outs there are absolutely outs there are definitely outs and because of the guaranteed salary, you know that after one more season, maybe another season, that there's going to be a potential ugly contract situation brewing in Cleveland with Nick Chubb and the Browns. Correct. If there's no guaranteed money coming my way, you know how the NFL works, and these players are after their their guaranteed money more so than anything. Um, I think that could potentially run into an issue. And for that reason, I'm going to go short on Nick Chubb, one of the guys that I really, really like. I enjoy watching him play, but we're talking about – mojo market here and i don't believe in nick chubb accru- accumulating that value towards the end of his career so basically just you're just don't. you're playing against the projections yeah in this, this regard is a long-term play here you might be able to in nick chubb over the next 16 25 games of his career you could probably find real spots to make money on a nick chubb that's not how i'm playing nick chubb i'm looking at nick chubb as i don't think he's gonna yeah i don't think he's gonna achieve this over five years so that's the short there so long-term play short nick chubb i like that that's just Perfect. All right. Got it. Wrap it up. You got one guy we just talked about because we were talking about Devontae Adams, and now you're going yeah. short on Mr. Derek Carr. I'm going to wrap up Mr. – yeah, the Derek Carr, I just – for the same reason. They're Right now, the Raiders are sitting at number two in the draft. They have to win some football games. They're favored over, I think, a touchdown in, the, in this week coming up. So I think – the Raiders, there's some belief that they could turn the corner a little bit. They've had really, really tough losses. They had the lead in a bunch of games. But when I'm looking at those types of situations, I got to look at the quarterback and be like, hey, you're not getting it done. Derek Carr's had the opportunity. He's on his second big deal. I just don't know that if you don't win football games in this league, I know that they have the buddy-buddy system with Derek Carr and Devontae Adams, and the Raiders brought in Devontae Adams on the strength of Derek Carr being the quarterback. But mm-hmm. guess what? This is a business, and if Derek Carr is not winning football games and they have a chance at a Caleb Williams, they have a chance at one of these younger quarterbacks that could change the franchise around, they're going to take that chance. You ready for this? Just just to kind of put a – kind of like kind of hammer that home as far as taking a chance. 2023, 2024, 2025, there are $0 guaranteed. Zero. So they know – I mean, look, the base salary is $41 million each one of those years. So think about that. Think about the fact that if you're the Las Vegas Raiders right now and you're watching Derek Carr, not struggle, but if you project and you look at him and you're like, the eye test shows you that there are many, many flaws still in his game, 
He's not going to be the guy going forward. Yeah, I'm, I don't see it. Like they're looking for twenty five more dollars in bank value out of a Derek Carr. We just talked about Stafford being thirty one, and you know, Carr's twenty nine years no, old. No, Carr's thirty one years old. Carr's thirty one. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yes. Oh, you, I do have it right yeah. here. So <laughs> right. who's twenty nine? Huh. I anyway, wish I was 29. I wish too. <laughs> but at, at $5.84 per year in average bank value for Derek Carr, do you really see it? I know the offense is a little bit better now than it's been. But Could he start anywhere else after this? I think Derek Carr definitely gets a chance somewhere. You know where I think Derek Carr might actually get a shot? Do to, ooh, Tampa Bay? Bang! There you go. I, I swear to God, that wasn't You're going to go with that? M ever over me? That's Tom Brady, right? <laughs> right? So if Tom Brady leaves, that'll be a little poetic because I do think Derek Carr was that guy that he was talking about. Oh my god. He wait, what? That's confirmed? Yeah. Well, no, no, no. It's still the rumor. Oh, Fitzpatrick man. came out and said, I think I was, and Tom Brady confirmed that he in fact wasn't. Right? <laughs> but he did ever it confirmed that Derek Carr wasn't. So wow, Derek Carr got out of Tampa Bay and uh, take over for Tom Brady. I, I swear don't that think, wasn't scripted either. I don't think I'll Kyle show you the Trask, script. There's I don't think there. Kyle Trask is the guy. And no, that's, definitely not. Definitely that's not. who they're looking at right now in Tampa as the backup. So, yeah, if if the Raiders do lose out, I don't say lose out, but they, they end up picking in the top five, top ten of this draft, and they get a chance at a blue-chip quarterback, yeah, you could definitely see Derek Carr trade day, uh, draft day trade. Interesting. I like Derek Carr. He's a good guy. He's good, you know, good for the league. Just, again, diminishing his talents. It's diminishing over time. Like it's, I had this again, conversation. He can, he can, him and Adams can hook up. 30 more times this year. I had this, this conversation with my buddy who's a Raiders fan yesterday who's heavily invested in the Derek Carr trading cards, and it's like actually pains him to admit it, but he agrees with me. Uh, he said, you know, if we get a chance at a guy, we have no choice. Of course. You know? Of course. I mean, look look what happens when, you know, a la San Francisco. You know, they had Jimmy G, and not saying he's Derek Carr's Jimmy G by any stretch, but you had a chance to go get Trey Lance in the beginning. I would Derek Carr's better. Yeah, no, I know. No, but I'm saying, like, I'm not putting San Fran in the same Ooh, boat. That's a good one. Like, who wins more? Derek Carr, Jimmy G. <laughs> so anyway, that is our shorts. Uh, definitely pay attention. We had a lot of uh, interactions on Twitter and the Discord last night as to what our portfolio looks like. So be sure to go over to the Discord uh, each and every day and check on. Listen, I'm not braggadocious, but when I'm up, I like to tell people about it. All right. I like to tell people about it. So if you go over to Discord and I'm sharing my portfolio and I'm showing you how much money I'm making, uh, it's for a reason. Okay. I'm trying to help you guys uh, so we can all live on boats uh, in the future. All right. So, we do have a football game tonight. Thursday Night Football coming to you live on Amazon uh, with Al Michaels, who, you know, I was talking to my dad about it, and he's like, all these great Sunday nighters, and my dad's like, man, you think Al Michaels is, like, pissed? And I was like, no, no. He, he, he laughed all the way to the back. He's sitting pretty with Kirk Herbstreit right now as they're getting paid a boatload. This he's is a there. wily vet. I think he's used to all the... All and the, you know what? There's no... But honestly, you can't throw anything my, Al Michaels' way that he's not going to... Do well with. outside of John Madden, who obviously is like the goat goat for me. Al Michaels' voice it resonates with me in my whole childhood, my now my adult life. Al Michaels is a national treasure, and that's why I watched Thursday Night Football. He did what? He did what? All right, anyway, tonight we have the Arizona Cardinals, who have again been struggling this year already, and the New Orleans Saints, which I think has a returning Jameis Winston, if I'm not mistaken. There's sti- it's still very up in the air right now. It, it might Andy Dalton be might be the Ian guy. Book. It might be Ian Book season. Uh, what? Yeah. Yeah, like Jameis is hurt still on and off with the back and the ankle. And Andy Dalton is now dealing with a similar back issue. They're both. So remember that they're time I told you about cleared. backup quarterbacks? They're both cleared, but they're both being almost handled the same way the Dolphins handled Teddy Bridgewater, where he was cleared, but they don't know. So then clearly we're going to get another banger of a football game. So we might get Ian Book. <laughs> Notre Dame, so, Ian Book. All right. Well, the book might be closing on him real quick. But if you want, short Ian Book if he's in there or, uh, tonight. Or. They might announce that Ian Book's going to be the starter. And then ba-bow. ba-bow. All right. So, I'm with it. And then ba-bow. <laughs> and then the game happens. So you're actually going to buy in right now Ian Book uh, at the, what, when, no, when no, it no, released. No, no, 9 no, o'clock no. in the morning. Don't. Don't. Because I don't think that Ian Book is going to start. <laughs> I just think that there's a chance that we do see some Ian there's Book There's a chance. Tonight. There's a chance, Chris. And I'm going to take some chances here. I'm not here. advising I'm Ian not Book. advising that either. All right. But there is a return tonight. And is the return of DeAndre Hopkins. Nook is back after his six-game PED suspension. Um. How do you fare? Like, how do you think this will play out as far as his usage, as far as snap counts, or is he just going completely all in on Thursday night football? I think he's got to be. You got to let him go. It's it's just his week one. If you look at wide receiver one's usage throughout week one, 
they got used. Yeah, know? a little bit. <clears throat> so I think he should be ready to go. There's no reason and healthy at this at that. Not way anywhere. Probably in the healthiest he's been in a, in quite some time coming into the season at week seven. DeAndre Hopkins is in a bad spot team wise, but they're probably really like dying to get a true wide receiver one in that offense for Kyler Murray. I expect to see a little bit of an uptick offensively because how could you not see one? I know they lost Hollywood Brown, for, but yeah, they for, did replace him with Robbie Anderson. I'm not such a fan of that, but. Um, DeAndre Hopkins being there helps and it elevates the offense in a major way. James Conner, iffy tonight. Uh, it's, it's been it's been Benjamin season for a so couple of weeks. So Eno Benjamin is the the guy. That, yeah, I mean I'm I'm happy about that because I did did Scooped I have Eno Benjamin in a lot of leagues this uh, year. I guess who'd have missed that boat? Um, I also have DeAndre Hopkins hoping he could turn the corner for me on my one in five. How wait? You, how long did you wait? In most I got drafts. him in the tenth in this yeah, see, one. They're, they're, I'm telling you. And honestly, I I regretted it immediately because as I'm setting my lineup, and now I'm one and one and five. Yeah. Really. All right, so, so it's, it's, like it's a risk. Hopkins. It was a risk to go without him, but now the Cardinals get a little bit of an uptick. Now look, with, as far as Kyler Murray's concerned, the the you know we all know what's happening with Kyler Murray, and it just so happens that I'm pretty sure it all worked out for Kyler Murray this week, okay? Because he has to play on Thursday. And then on the weekend is when the new Call of Duty comes out. So he's like, it's fine. So the whole studying thing, he prepared for this game. And then the new map and the new game comes out, Call of Duty. He'll be lighting up the, the scoreboard over there so he doesn't worry about it. But then going forward, be careful. Uh, the Saints, though, the one guy I wanted to bring up is the Swiss Army knife known as Taysom Hill. So we've seen what he can do over the course of this first six weeks. There's a couple times where he looked absolutely unstoppable. And then there's a couple times where he's an absolute you know, dud, and it just didn't plan, uh, pan out. Is there a reason for you to go in on a Taysom Hill on a night like tonight where it could be Ian Book, could be Andy Dalton? You know, the, the whole quarterback situation is up in the air. No. Not against the Cardinals. I'm, I'm a little a bit bad worried. Defense, I'm said. a little bit worried about all of the Saints offensively this week. Okay. I know that the I know that the, the Cardinals aren't really great defensively, but they blitz a lot. And when blitz all night. They blitz a lot. So, like, they're one of the most blitz-happy teams in that the NFL. That was a movie reference. He'd... And Chris Olave, like, look what, as bad as that defense has been, look at how they've done against opposing teams' number one wideouts, mm. right? The blitz-happy defense plus the press coverage, it really disrupts a lot for the wide receiver one. So I'm kind of avoiding any Saints players. There one be there might be one guy that I actually am in on. Olave? Like, no, 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 no. Jawan Jennings. Okay. Reason being, wait, wait, I always get this name wrong, and AJ is going to la laugh at me. <laughs> it is actually Jawan Johnson hey. because Jawan Jennings is the forty. Jawan Jennings is his cousin. As I, I said it, I'm like, <laughs> damn it! But here we are, Jawan Johnson season. Adam Troutman's out, and because of their propensity to shut down the number one wide receiver, I don't really believe in Olave in this one because he's also kind of dealing with a little bit of concussion, concussion injury, yeah. uh, issue. And because of the quarterback situation that they have injury-wise and the blitz, you could expect the tight end to probably get a little bit of looks. I don't think it's too much of a look, but modestly. Never know. Modestly. He's look sitting, at like, a dollar. Guy, uh, he's sitting at like a dollar or something, so you could see it. But if he gets a touchdown, I think there's a chance. Look at yeah, Denver guy, Dulcich. <laughs> Denver but guy. I'm, I'm just <laughs> – how about this? I'm out on all of the Saints' offense. I'm in on DeAndre Hopkins today, and I'm in on a Kyler to have a little bit of a performance. And Kyler's been on a little bit of a downtick, so there is probably a little bit of room for improvement to get back to where they expected him to be to begin with. Um, oh, yeah. and, and and programming, though. They're wearing all black. The, yeah. black, the new black helmets, yeah. the new black jerseys. Black helmets on top of what yes. we see over there with yes. DeAndre Hopkins. How is De DeAndre Hopkins going to have 13 touchdowns tonight? <laughs> all black. Come on, bro. You give me the uniforms, all black. I'm in on the Cardinals tonight. That is my play there. I'm just okay. going to get a heads up that. And uh, DeAndre Hopkins, I got to assume that he's going to go off. Tonight. All right. In the all blacks. So. That'll do it. That'll do Thursday Night Football's preview. Guys, be sure to subscribe and like the video, right? And on top of that, I need you to do me a favor. Head on over to mojo.com and follow all the bloggers over there. They have some fantastic in-depth writing each and every day. Uh, I'm, I literally hit refresh on the hour just to see how much content these guys are putting out. They got historical data. They got up-to-the-minute stuff. They got dynasty rankings. They got everything. Go check that out. Also, follow us on all social medias according across the board. Instagram, TikTok, uh, uh, Twitter. Uh, join the Discord. See, I said the Discord. You thought I was going to miss it. The Discord. I finally figured out how to use the damn thing. So that, that works. And now I'm in and I'm having fun with it already. Figured out. I'm listening. I'm not that old, but, you know, I, even the, the powers that be, even our upper brass were saying like, look, 
it, it tripped us up too. And I'm like, all right, good. Then I don't feel so, so wrong here. Mm. So I finally joined. I'm having a good time with it. You could too. Get your expert analysis. Myself and Chris will be in there. Um, Tune into some Twitter spaces. I'm assuming that, uh, you know, they usually don't on Monday nights, but they might. Uh, Luke, I think it's the before. Yeah, Thursday nights. Thursday well. nights. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So check that out. If not, maybe I'll go live on Twitter spaces. Why not? I don't know. Uh, big day today. So for that, for Dave Sturchio, Chris Gucci, and of course, A5, Anthony behind the glass. And by the way, we call him A5 because he's our fifth Anthony that's worked for us over at Chop Studios. So that's, that's A5. So people are like, why? Is I don't want to get it. Now you understand. Now you know why. And he does a great job on the board. I wonder if anybody was wondering that. It had to have been. Had to have been. There had to be at least one person. We're like, why A5? What does that mean? I don't know. Well, I'm in here to inform the masses about all things Mojo Market Report, and he's involved. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys tomorrow as we pick a couple games to keep your eye on and put a bow on Thursday Night Football. See you guys tomorrow. Juwan Johnson? <laughs> Jennings? <laughs>